So, at any topic, eukaryotes. Now, so on one hand, can you really cover eukaryotes in one day? Well, of course not. Um, on the other hand, is the microbiology class, should it be included at all? The answer to that is easy. Yes. So here's a phylogenetic tree of eukaryotes. It's heavily skewed toward us, as usual. Um, in this case, we've expanded this part of the tree out. You could, of course, expand any of these branches out to the same kind of extent. Um, but we're people, so we're over here. And so here we are with rats and, and, and goldfish and that kind of stuff, where we belong. Um, but if you look at this tree, it, it, it's absolutely clear that most of the organisms, most of the diversity of this tree is microbial. Um, but before we touch on that in any further depth, let, let's talk about what these organisms are. So out here, of course, are, are animals. We've got fungi over here. Animals and fungi are related. It shows more in some people than others. Um, <laughs> we have plants, including the green algae. Green algae are just unicellular plants. Uh, we have so they're also related to red algae. We've got these things called the chromalveolates. Plasmodium is probably the one you know. Um, and the excavates, which are organisms that lack mitochondria. They lack mitochondria, but that, by the way, is a secondary change in the organisms. These organisms have mitochondrial genes in the nucleus. It's absolutely clear that they used to have mitochondria and lost them. Um, in some cases, they have this thing called a mitosome, which is, in essence, a, 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 a mitochondrion without any DNA left in it. Um, often these things are, are a little bit different and are hydrogen metabolized in hydrogen, hydrogenosomes instead of mitochondria. So they're very, very highly derived. In some cases, though, those mitochondria are actually at the opposite end of the spectrum. Excuse me, not in those, in some of the other ones. And they're just completely, I mean, they're, they're very much like the bacteria that, that they originated with. It turns out that it, it, as detailed as we understand the phylogenetic tree of bacteria and, and probably archaea, and eukaryotes, it's a lot harder. This has to do with the fact that it's a really long branch between anything else and the eukaryotes. Um, and because it's, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty in the ribosomal, particularly analysis, in the deepest branches. And so traditionally, the eukaryotes are divided into five major groups and no assignment about how they're related to each other is made. I would argue, so these are, so the excavates, that is the amitochondrial organisms, uh, the rhizaria, Unicons, the chromalveolates, and the plantae. I would argue that, the, that there's pretty good evidence that the root of this tree is somewhere in here. And so this group would be invalid, right? This is a, a basal tree, and the other ones emerge from that. Um, nevertheless, this is what we have. This is a pretty diverse tree. Yeah. So this is only microbial. No, this is all of them. This is all of the that's what I'm at. That's what I'm about to show you. In this, everything in this tree is microbial, except right here, the animals, and right here, the plants, the land plants and caryophytes. Some people would argue that some of the uh, basidiomycetes are, are macroscopic. Some of the biggest creatures alive, probably the biggest creatures alive, are giant fungal colonies. You know, they, cover eight, they live in the dirt, covering acres and acres of, of land. Um, but they're nevertheless generally considered microbial, right? Because you can't actually see them except for mushrooms uh, without a microscope. Some of these things you can see, they're colonial, the cells are, are organized together, but not truly multicellular. Um, but, but eukaryotes are just as microbial as bacteria in, in a meaningful way, with the exception, I think, meaningful exception of, of plants and animals, vascular plants and animals. 
So let's talk about some of these organisms. A lot of these are uh, uh, unfamiliar to you. That's to be expected. I'll be honest, they're unfamiliar to me. Uh, this is the group of organisms that I know the least about. So what are some of the general properties of eukaryotes? Um, here's one. The, the main thing is right here. Eukaryotes are heterotrophic. Their metabolism, compared to bacteria, for example, their metabolism is homogeneous. They are almost universally aerobic heterotrophs. Even that aerobicness comes from mitochondria, right? This internal bacterial symbiote. Those that are phototrophic are phototrophic not on their own, but because of this internal symbiote. In this case, the, the chloroplast. And so the, the eukaryon, the organism itself, is an anaerobic heterotroph. And other metabolisms are supplemented by the inclusion of these bacterial symbionts. The morphology of eukaryotes is a lot more complicated than the typical bacteria or archaea. And you, you guys have seen this since probably. Right. You've, got a, you've got a nucleus and mitochondria and all that stuff. I would like to point out that that stereotypical eukaryotic cell does not exist. There is a lot more variation in cellular structure in eukaryotes than you probably think. Uh, plants, for example, don't have spindle apparatus. They, they don't have a cent centrioles. I could be specific to centrioles. Mitosis is a lot more variable than you might think. In some cases, the nuclear envelope surrounds the entire spindle complex. In others, the nuclear envelope completely disperses. Sometimes the nuclear envelope stays, but the centrioles are on the outside, and the tubules go through. There's just all kinds of stuff. There are organisms that lack, my, that lack mitochondria. I mentioned that already. There are organisms that lack the Golgi apparatus, an endoplasmic particulate. There are organisms with lots and lots of novel kinds of organelles. So the kind of general view of what a eukaryotic cell looks like is very useful. But you have to keep in mind that that's not really the way eukaryotic cells are. 